Can you make astro photos with your smartphone? Do you have a smartphone? Does it have a camera? Is it a bit recent? If you answered yes to those three questions, chances are that you can use this smartphone for astrophotography. So join me on my nightly adventure on the heather fields in the south of Holland. And be sure to stick around till the end, as I will show how to get to results like this one and this one, just by editing it on your phone. Roll that intro. Starscape photography is the art of taking photos of the landscape together with the amazing night sky. This is generally done with a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a fast wide lens and using a tripod of course. But what if you don't have a big camera? If you have a recent smartphone you will probably already be able to shoot pretty decent images. And if you make use of some clever apps, you can even further improve your chances of an inspiring starscape. There are apps to prepare for your shoot. Apps that show where the Milky Way, the Moon or Sun will appear on your horizon. On this specific outing, I didn't prepare at all. I just wanted to see whether or not I could shoot some nice scenic photos. I tried using the smartphone in video mode to document what I did for this video. Although it works, it is not of a very high quality. Tonight I'm at the heather, a big heather field in the south of Holland. And I just wanted to do some starscaping. But um, with that moon out there, it's very difficult. So I opted for shooting some nice scenery with the moon and the fog above the heather and I tried to do some light painting. With light painting you just point a light source at your target for a short time just to make the foreground details come out better. Be careful not to be shining your light into the direction of others around you. You might ruin someone else's photo. And if you are a photographer amongst a group of visual observers, simply forget about light painting altogether. You will ruin their dark adaptation. At best, you make yourself the least liked person in the group. But even if you are the only person there, make sure you are not startling any wildlife with your unexpected light. On my night on the heather fields, the moon was lighting up the surrounding terrain and a thin layer of fog was starting to form. I shot a few scenic photos, if I say so myself. These were all shot on my iPhone on a tripod with the night mode toggle set to 30 second exposure. I don't think the iPhone actually shoots for that long, but it does a stacking trick. Let's see how I edited that middle image on my iPhone using the free app Snapseed. You load the image and if as was the case here, the rotation is off, you can rotate it in the app. I tend to start with the HDR scape option, as that does a pretty good, but a bit too strong job. Swiping left and right allows you to alter the filter strength. Swiping up and down allows you to select different properties for the current operation. Let's alter the saturation so green is actually green in the foreground. Zooming in shows that the HDR scape operation also enhanced the noise, but overall the image looks nice to me if I scroll around a bit by dragging that blue rectangle. Let's try to subdue the noise a bit with the details operation. By reducing structure I should get rid of some noise. And that seems to work nicely, but let's not overdo it. The foreground retained most of its details still. With the tune image operation you can do some tweaks still. Swiping down I select contrast and enhance the contrast a bit. The shadow areas are a bit dark still. So zooming in on the dark areas and holding a finger on the screen I can see that I would like to bring out the shadowed areas a bit more. Again swiping down I select shadows and then I can bring that up. Yes, much better. 
Now I want the sky to be a bit more blue and to achieve that I select warmth and lower that a bit. Ready to save a new version by selecting save a copy. The other image I would like to show is the bridge at the Lauwersmeer, uh, see my previous video. After loading the image I again start with HDR scape, which looks nice but the shadow areas are much too green. I could fix that by reducing the overall saturation, but in doing so I would also remove all color from the rest of the image. Instead I can better use the selective operation. I can tap the screen to set a reference point. And by pinching on the screen I can select the region that will be affected. Swiping down allows me to select the saturation option and reducing the saturation will now only be affecting that selected image area. Next I would like to reduce the noise in the sky area a bit. Altering the structure property on the first reference point would then be useless. So with the plus icon I can add another reference point and set its area. And by setting this one to structure I can reduce the noise levels in the sky. You can even get rid of satellite trails and airplanes by using the healing operation. The zoom level determines the precision of the healing brush. If too big you risk also removing stars which I would avoid doing. Finally, we can also play with curves, just like we are used to in software such as Photoshop. There are some presets to choose from, or you can just alter the curves manually. Holding the finger on the screen shows me before and after view, and I feel it is quite a powerful way of editing your smartphone astro photography on the phone itself. Next to saving the image, you can also show all your edits. This way you can see all the steps you took to get to your end result. So for this image we did the HDR scape, but then found the foreground was too green. So we did edits in selective mode. And then we removed planes and satellites using the healing brush. And finally we played with curves to bring out the Milky Way even more.